What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's time for a recap of the fifth installment of Janelle Evans's I Have Something to Say mockumentary series. Just a reminder that every single episode of this series contradicts the episode prior to it. Like it's honestly, it started off being comical, but now it's just plain sad. Um, and we're gonna get into a little bit more of that um, later on in this video. Janelle talks about how she was trying to get the judge thrown off the case for being biased allegedly and um, he refused to recuse himself and then she cuts on over to a random video of herself in bed trying to force out a couple of tears and they just wouldn't come. I think she got maybe two struggle tears out but listen I cried a lot more than that when um, I stubbed my toe this morning. Then she talks about how Barbara and Jace um, allegedly got into some kind of fight at school. In Janelle's version of events she says that Jace tripped and fell onto another kid who then punched him five times. Then Barbara wanted to have him put into a hospital and then she says that she was trying to block his stay in a hospital and that her mom constantly tries to put like her kids in and out of group homes. She says that she did that to her sister and her brother as well and that she was trying to do that with Jace which led me to believe like oh like this isn't a hospital because like she thinks something happened with his back like Barbara thinks Jace needs to be in some kind of like a mental hospital or a psychiatric hospital. I don't know what it is but it seemed as though she was trying to get at that um, but listen if that is what Barbara was trying to do, then it would mean that the version of events that Janelle is telling here is not true, right? Like if your child trips and falls onto another child and that other child starts attacking them, why would you want to put your child into a mental hospital over that? It doesn't make any kind of sense. And can we also get into how this is the third time that um, a story involving someone tripping and falling and ending up into a fight comes out of David or Janelle's mouth. David said that about his baby mama in the other video. He's like, oh, like she was trying to attack me. Then she fell on me and you know, kept trying to attack me. Um, Janelle said that in the collarbone incident. She's like, oh, um, it happened because I tripped and fell in a hot pothole. David fell on top of me and we wound up fighting each other because we couldn't see in the dark. And now here we are with story number three about someone connected to them tripping and falling into a fight. It's very odd. I I'm amazed that they're not tired of this shtick by this point. The judge, by the way, did ultimately wind up recusing himself from the case a week later and was replaced with a woman who apparently, quote unquote, exposed CPS for quote unquote not having any proper paperwork for removing the kids from the home. Again, I say quote unquote because Janelle's version of events is never to be believed. I am dead at her bragging about having had that judge before for other criminal cases. She's talking about how her lawyer was like, oh, this judge is really stern, I'm nervous. And Janelle was like, no, I got this. I've had this one for my other criminal cases. We're good. She's strict, but she's fair. Um, you know, the trash of it all. Um, then she rips in to Marissa for testifying again against she and David. And this is what I meant in the beginning of my video when I talked about how every single episode of this mockumentary has Janelle blatantly and I mean blatantly contradicting her claims in the prior episodes. Literally, in episode four of this mockumentary, she claimed that the only testimony that Marissa gave when up on the stand was that David and Janelle curse at each other sometimes. Nothing else is going on in the home. Meanwhile, here in episode five, Janelle is ripping into this, what, like 13, 14 year old, literally making fun of her for everything that she said about them, which in my opinion, I believe 100% of what it is that Marissa testified against them. She says that David would get so pissed off that he would like break doors off of like the hinges with his bare hands. And then she says that she was never happy on the land. She always faked it and she, you know, didn't want to live there, but she was too scared to tell literally anybody in her life. And Janelle's like, well, why did you tell anyone? Because she was too scared, Boo Boo the Fool. You literally just said that. Like, how does that not click to you at all? And then she goes, I showed these photographs where Marissa was smiling. A couple of videos where she was smiling and laughing too. What does she mean she wasn't happy? I mean, really, girl? Really? And then she also makes fun of uh, Marissa for wanting to go back to normal school. She's like, it was a conspiracy against us because she wants to go back to normal school. That's why she did this like bad testimony against us, etc. Cetera, 
etc. She also goes into how her mother Barbara blocked Ensley and Jace from FaceTiming with Janelle because she just didn't want that to happen and she also blocked Janelle's number from Jace's phone because uh, Janelle would constantly be recording their calls for court. Um, you know, good for her for doing that because that is just so freaking weird. And Nathan's mother Doris did the same thing as well with Kaiser. They both got tired of Janelle uh, manipulating the kids in their conversation for court. Uh, Kaiser's teacher also testified positively allegedly in favor of them being there daily to pick him up from school and she also gets into the concerning video that her brother put up of Ensley having a meltdown at Barbara's house. So Ensley is in her diaper and she's having a meltdown. She's locked in a room with Janelle's brother and all he's doing is interrogating her about a scratch. I didn't see the scratch but he says there's a giant scratch on her and he's like why is there a giant scratch on your back Ensley? Why is there? And Janelle introduces the video by saying it's so hard to watch. It's horrific. It's heartbreaking. She talks about how she reported it to CPS yet she plays it in its entirety. You know like I feel like it, it would have been enough to just talk about it but to outright go and play it again something so quote-unquote traumatic it doesn't really you know like it doesn't compute to me Janelle then scoffs at how her mother told her that everything involving losing the kids would be over if she left David um, remember she allegedly chose David over the children throughout this trial it's been alleged that Janelle was given a get out of jail free card apparently the court case was solely against David's um, behavior towards the children right the people told her allegedly listen and you can stay in the home with the kids just make sure that David leaves for the duration of the trial so that you don't have to outroot them and send them to all these various homes and apparently Janelle chose David over them so I think that that was what Barbara was referring to in terms of you know the story that Janelle is telling and then Janelle just has the most classic Janelle response on the planet she goes no why would I do that then have to deal with divorce heartbreak depression Obviously losing her kids is so much easier, right? Here this girl is crying about how she like lost her kids, etc., etc. Apparently there's this jail how to get out of jail free card where you just stay home with your kids and let the court case run. And you chose this man over the kids and now you're so strongly talking about how there's no way you'd ever do like what? I just can't, I can't, I can't. She also says that her mother Barbara knows nothing about marriage or keeping a family together, which is quite rich coming from Janelle. Some with three kids by three men talk about keeping a family together and six engagements under her belt clearly she knows a thing or two about marriage right according to Janelle Marissa also claimed that David would leave guns around on the counter and Janelle both scoffed at this claim and corroborated it by saying like he wouldn't do that but when he did I would be right there all the time as if that could prevent a freak accident from happening or even Janelle herself from being the victim of a freak accident with these damn guns. Uh, she wraps up the video by talking about wanting to take her mother Barbara back to court for custody of Chase and guys I cannot say it enough Barbara really took a massive L one of the biggest biggest L's of the century for participating in this documentary. In episodes one or two, they heavily rely on her to set you up to believe that Janelle and David are incredibly innocent throughout this whole thing. So Barbara is ripping into CPS, uh, talking about how upstanding of citizens uh, Janelle and David are despite their like 20,000 mugshots between the two of them. And now here they are from episode three on throughout the rest of the series, dragging her through the mud, talking about how horrible she was as a mother to Janelle how horrible she is as a grandmother how horrible she is as a mother to Jace etc etc and now Janelle wants to take Barbara back to court by the way this played out on a season of Team Mom 2 and I'm pretty sure Janelle can't even continue to fight for Jace in court like that was the final final go just a couple of short years ago so she truly is delusional you guys but you know Barbara hold that L girl when you do clownery the clownery always comes back to bite in the words of the great Mo Unique. Guys, that's a summary of what went down on episode five of Janelle Evans's mockumentary called I Have Something to Say. What did you think about the entire situation? Especially her not even her mocking Marissa, Marissa's claims about David leaving guns out on counters and David ripping doors out with his bare hands. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and as usual, we'll chat. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.